Hey guys, my name is Ben Salstrom. I am wiring receptacle boxes and I want to show you the process of how you roll in each particular set of wires, starting with the grounds, the neutrals, and finally the hots. This is probably your most standard situation right here where we are feeding multiple outlets. We've got power coming from this outlet here, feeding into this one, and then coming back out of there and back down to there and so on. So this is like a daisy chain of outlets if you want to call it that. So uh, this is the box we're going to be working on. As you can see I already have my sheathing stripped off of these sets of wires and I have them labeled. So uh, I've got the circuit number and this is the power coming in because it says from receptacle on the left and this is to the receptacle on the right. We're going to start with the ground wires so we're going to bend these other ones out of the way. We're going to be using a piece of insulated 14 gauge ground wire. Uh, it's green insulated wire and this is a this is a 20 amp circuit. These are these are 12 gauge wires. But by code, you do not need to use a 12 gauge piece of wire to connect to your outlet for the ground. So this is just more flexible and it's going to give you a lot more uh, it'll just make it easier when you push this back in here. The insulated wire also prevents uh, when you're pushing that outlet back in there you have that bare copper wire most of the time that is threatening to short out onto something so if you use a piece of insulated wire that keeps it from from shorting out so we're gonna go ahead and attach this on here now always follow capacity guidelines for the wire nuts you're using uh, so in this case uh, a yellow wire nut is adequate you do not need to use the green wire nuts you can use them but they're uh, kind of for a different purpose I'll explain that in a separate video but get that good and snug and then if you need to take a some kind of a tool that you can grip the wire nut with and it gives you just a little bit more torque on it I like to just twist it just enough so that you see a little bit of twisting happening past the edge of the wire nut but that's it do not thread this way back into the box it's gonna cause you nothing but headaches later on down the road Got some light here for you so you can see back in this box. This is probably the trickiest part of wiring a box. It's just being, uh, doing this uh, slow and steady, getting these wires rolled in here, starting with the grounds, getting them way back into the back of the box as far as you can. This is the deepest single gang box that I could get a hold of at my uh, local home improvement store or Menards. And basically you just get it to roll around the outside edges there, like, like that. <laughs> And just spend quite a bit of time, sorry I'm blocking your view, but <clears throat> getting these pushed all the way to the very back of the box, like so. Leave your ground wire coming out right here. And as you can see, we have a pretty clean uh, roll in there. We didn't bend the cable excessively, sh uh, the wire excessively sharp anywhere. So now we're going to move on to the neutrals. All right, now I'd say a lot of the time uh, people would quit right here that I would call that good for their roughing wiring because a lot of uh, a lot of people would tend to use the terminals on the sides of the outlet or the receptacle to connect from one circuit to the next or from one uh, outlet to the next. As you can see, there's two spots there and there's two spots over here. So uh, why? would you do anything different other than use those? <clears throat> and the reason is, this is a lot less solid. When you connect onto here, it's okay, but it's not as secure as a wire nut in the back of the box, properly connected onto these, and then you use a pigtail coming out to here and here. So now we're gonna create a pigtail with our neutrals and a pigtail with our hot wires. This also makes it so that if you were to, let's say, take one of the outlets out, so if you want to just take this guy out of the circuit, uh, that would essentially disconnect all the rest of the outlets if you've used these terminals on the side uh, to connect to the next one. So if you have it pigtailed and you just have a couple wires coming out, you take this outlet out and it doesn't disconnect power from the rest of them, so you could safe those off, put wire nuts on them, roll it back into the box if for some reason you wanted to uh, take the outlet out temporarily if you're painting or some other reason. So that's the other uh, positive of doing it that way. I'm going to strip the wires back approximately a half inch. You don't want to have too much otherwise uh, 
when you put your wire nut on, you will end up with copper showing past the edge of it, and you want to make sure that there's no uh, no bare wire showing past the edge of the wire nut. Make sure you get the fronts of the wires all nice and even, and then we are good to go to thread this on here. Again, if your wire nuts don't have the wings on them, you're going to need to use something to just get a hold of this and rotate it because my fingers aren't strong enough. Maybe yours are. And again, we're just going to rotate it just far enough so that it threads. You can just start see it starting to twist the wires going back, but not any further than that. That might even be a little more than necessary. Get them nice and tight. Make sure that they are not going to come out, but just don't over braid them. There's a view inside the box for you. The neutrals are nicely rolled in the back and our pigtails coming out the front here. And this pigtail uh, for the neutral and the hot wire has to be the full size of the, wi the circuit wire, so 12 gauge. You can only do a smaller wire for the ground, which is 14 gauge in this case. You see all the wires are rolling into the back of the box real nice. <clears throat> That's a kind of a determinant on how much cable you have coming out past the edge, front edge of your box. I've been doing six inches for the most part. It looks like I might even be a tad over in this case, six and a half or so, but six inches has been the target. Uh, so I, uh, the wires are coming in the bottom of the box and then I let them go across the back and out the front and I've been leaving about six inches. And that, as you were seeing, makes it really nice for making that one loop with the wire in the back of the box when you tuck it back in. And you wouldn't want any more or you'll end up with just so much wire in the back of your box that you won't be happy. But you want to have enough to where you have lots of flexibility if you ever needed to trim the ends off or anything like that. I've been using this as a depth gauge for uh, knowing where to trim my wires off when I pull them into the box. Just find something that is the length that you like, which, like I said, six inches past the front edge of the box. Trim these back half inch. Line the wires up and put your wire nut on. Give it a little bit more twist. Just starting to twist past the edge of the wire nut. That's where what I like it, the way I like it. And uh, there's no copper showing along the bottom edge of the wire nut. Roll the wires into the back of the box. And now we have our pigtails extending out the front. And using our handy depth gauge, we're gonna use the same concept and clip these off right here. And now we would be ready to um, install a receptacle, except for that we're in the rough end stage, it's gotta be sheetrocked yet, so we're just gonna safe these off by putting a wire nut on the hot and the neutral, like so. And I like to wrap the ground wire around this, just to kind of keep them together, and then roll that into the box like so. You can see here, now that this is rolled in here, that uh, there is, are no wires that are pushing up against the edge of this box. And this is probably in from the front about a quarter of an inch. And the that's important because when they come with a roto zip to cut the drywall out, a lot of times guys will use a roto zip, so they'll put the drywall over this. They'll pop a hole with the rotating bit through, find the edge of the box, and then cut the hole around the outside edge, okay? Now if your wires are way up tight or way out or all around here, they could be damaged from that, so just be aware of that. Theoretically now, we'd be ready to turn on our circuit breaker if all the rest of these were done, and that's one of the benefits of doing it this way is during your rough construction, you can turn the, the circuit on uh, before the outlets are installed. Since it's they're all pigtailed and you safe them off like I showed you, then you can turn the circuit on and you'll find out right away if there's any kind of an issue. If it trips or if the arc fault trips or the ground fault trips or whatever, uh, you'll know right away so you can fix the problem while your walls are open. Uh, and then uh, also, if anything happens during the remainder of construction, if some kind of a screw gets ran into a wire or something weird happens, 
you will know right away as long as you're checking your panel to see if something is tripped. I'm going to leave my circuits on during the remainder of the rough construction so that I know if something happens right away. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it a lot. If this video helped you out, please rate it up and feel free to subscribe for more helpful videos. We'll talk to you in the next video.